Hey guys, I'm Artem. <laughs> and I'm Kimmy. And I'm Paula. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the Grace, the Grace Channel. Grace Channel. Hello everyone! Allow me to share a little bit about us three. Kuya Arta, Paula, and I are a group of friends that go way back. We all went to the same small high school, which was about seven to eight years ago, and now we are all serving in the same ministry and outreach team at church. But it was only this past quarantine when Kuya Arta sent Paula and I a video about old friends that no longer communicate, but was it directed at us? that really launched our friendship and now with the same heart purpose and passion we have come to start the grace channel together wow that is so true like i remember sending that video and i'm like guys uh one of my friends sent me this video that we used to chill all the time and now we don't talk and he sent me that video so i'm like oh <laughs> but then and then i sent it to you guys so you can send it to your other friends too but anyways i i want to tell you guys why we are doing this grace channel okay but before i tell you guys why we are doing this the making of a youtube channel like for us three this is totally out of our comfort zone okay like we never thought like we would be doing this like making videos doing contents never in our life uh we thought we would be uh doing this but that is why we are called the grace channel because we can only do this by the grace of god like it's only by god's grace so so basically why we are doing this grace channel there's so many reasons we can think of in why we are doing this channel but to sum up or like put everything together our main reason and goal is to share the grace and love we have received from god to our viewers through exciting contents through life talks like coffee talks and all that kind of thing that we are going to be making so be excited and like expect like we have something prepared for the whole 2021 already so be excited so i'm really excited but yeah hopefully you are excited too Thank you so much, Kuya Artem and Atakimi, for sharing that. Um, once again, we want to let you guys know that we are very excited to share how Jesus has been working in our lives. But um, before we dive deeper into the deeper part of our lives, before we share um, or spill the tea, we want to, you guys to get to know us first. So today, Kuya Artem and Atakimi, we will be doing a fast talk. Wow. <laughs> Like, like real fast, like... Like real fast, like we're gonna rap. <laughs> kind of rap? <laughs> we're gonna rap. <laughs> Anyways, no, um, we will be doing a fast talk. Normally, how a fast talk usually goes is I will ask a question and I will give you guys two choices that you can choose from and um, you have to choose in a quick manner. But with this fast talk that we are going to be doing, we will not have any choices. Instead, I will simply be asking Aww. us questions and us three will have to answer it truthfully and with clarity. The questions are cool, so... <laughs> Um, does that make sense, guys? We yeah, are talking about the Kimmy. What yeah. about you guys? Are you guys so excited? We're so excited for you guys to get to know us. So without further ado, let's get started with the first question. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what name do you go by? Oh, that's easy. Um, I go by Artem. I go by Kimmy. Um, most people, most people call me Paula. Some people call me Pauls. That's it, really. Second question: How old are you? Um, I'm currently twenty four. I'm twenty. You're twenty three. When are you turning twenty four at the Kimi? Month. <laughs> I'm also twenty three. I'm the youngest here. I like being the baby. What's yes. your favorite food? For me, I've always loved like eating chicken, like ever since I was a kid. Chicken and fish. Like I love what fish. What about your favorite drink? Ah, uh, favorite drink? I don't really have a favorite drink. I basically drink everything. I love water. I love drinking water. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> water. What about the other games? What is your favorite food or drink? Um, I'll answer the drink one. I really love coffee. Wow. Wow. Milk tea or bubble tea? Actually, I started liking coffee too, like, 
ever since the pandemic. I don't know why. For some reason, the pandemic like made me try new things. <laughs> I started wow. getting coffee. Double double. <laughs> Just like... Well, my favorite food is samgyeopsal. I think everyone knows that. I'm low key Korean. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> um, but ramen comes very very close. So if you want a DoorDash. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, fourth question. Where are you from? We all currently live in Canada now, but then from the Philippines, I'm from Cebu City. So I'm Bisaya. So I can basically speak Bisaya, like Tagalog, and English. So I speak two dialect and one English. (laughs) 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 Well, for me, my parents are from the Philippines, but I was born and raised here in Winnipeg. Wow, Winnipegger. Wow. Born and raised. Born Friendly <laughs> Manitoba. <here in> <laughs> well, me, I was born in Manila and raised in Cavite, but I pretty much grew up here in Winnipeg. Oh. So, next question. What do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, for me, I, I actually do a lot of things. And if I just have spare time, I like playing basketball. I, I love playing video games. Uh, another thing I've learned during this pandemic is like what I do in my spare time is I actually started enjoying reading. Like I'm reading a book. Like um, this is the book I'm reading right now. It's called What on Earth Am I Here For? So if you want to know the very reason why you are living in this earth, give it a shot. There's a lot of things. I love cleaning my room. Like every month, probably I rearrange my room or something. And yeah, and spending time with my family, especially Gracie. If you guys don't know, I have a little sister. Her name's Gracie. I love bugging her. She's really awesome. So what about you at the Kimi? Well, I love to talk to my friends or watch K-dramas or other movies. I also like to sing and play instruments, sometimes read, or I like to visit my cousins and play with my little babies. Very <laughs> cute. Well, I really have nothing interesting to share because I'm a typical <laughs> teenager. <laughs> like I like on my in my spare time I like to eat, I like to sleep, I like to watch something. Um I also like driving by myself or just eating alone in a restaurant back when we didn't have any restrictions. So that part I miss very much. But I want to let you guys know that we have finished half of our questions almost. Half. Wow. We're doing great so far. Oh my gosh. That's, this is easy. <laughs> but, I know, right? But but for the second half of these questions, it will be a little deeper. Are you guys oh my ready? Gosh. Are you guys ready? I am not prepared for this. I am not ready to. Okay. <laughs> the, number six. What kind of dreams did you guys have when you were younger? I guess when, while I was still living in the Philippines, it was either like you become a nurse or an engineer. <laughs> like, so basically, like, I guess growing up, I, there, it was one of those two. It's either I wanted to be an engineer or um, a nurse. But then when I came to Canada, though, I, I really wanted to be an architect. But then that didn't work out because I started to realize yeah, it's too hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, right now, I'm currently just trying to finish my business administration degree and I love business like I love reading books about like business and all that kind of things like invest things so yeah (laughs) wow well for me my dream when I was younger was um, to graduate university which I actually now have done thank you lord wow congrats Um, for my family to have a house, which is still a dream in the making, but I don't believe that it'll come soon. Amen. Claiming, claiming. (laughs) But, um, with me, when I was younger, particularly when I was in grade three, I wanted to be a psychologist. Well, it was very shallow. It was only because I liked saying the word psychology. And in grade three, I was able to spell the word psychology, so I felt super smart. (laughs) <laughs> so that, was the, that was the only reason um but when i was in grade 10 i wanted to be an astronaut like for real like i genuinely <laughs> wanted to go to space but i realized that it involved too much physics so i was like oh, nah, i'm like that i know i ain't about that life so if you're watching this and you're good at physics try being an astronaut try being an astronaut fulfill my dream for me next question what's one of your strengths and weaknesses i guess to think of it right now strength one of my strengths, I guess I could say I have a way of like influencing people. 
I don't know. I'm not really sure, guys. What you guys have known me. What are some of my strengths? <laughs> I agree with that, Kuya Artem. You do have your own way of influencing people. Like, not a lot of people can do that. So, you're pretty strong at that. Thank you, Lord. Wow, so strong. <laughs> I don't know what else. Um, saving money. Uh, like, a lot of people know me as Kuripot, but then I'm actually just saving for something. It's actually a talent <laughs> to be a Kuripot. Huh? Not everyone can be Kuripot. Like, it's hard for them to say no. I guess I guess that's a strength for me <laughs> to say no. I can say no if I, if, um, I, don't, if I, if I have to say no. What about you, Ate Kimi? What's one of your strengths? Um, I think one of my strengths <clears throat> is being organized and staying on top of things. We definitely genuinely yeah, agree. Yeah, I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I think you do it on a whole new level. We're very She's like a secretary. <laughs> What's wrong with secretary? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with secretary, Kim? For me, one of the God-given strengths that I think I have by the grace of God is my ability to get back up no matter how low I have reached. Um, I, I don't know if you know me really well. I think you know how much I have fallen down and how much Aww. I have, how low I have reached. But um, obviously not by my strength nor by my power, but by the grace of God alone, I was always able to get back up and no matter what. So I think that's one of the strengths God has given me. <laughs> well, don't cry. <laughs> Tissue, please. Tissue. <laughs> All right. Next question. What is one of your um, weaknesses? Now, one of my weaknesses is actually like, especially knowing a lot of people, like you'd become that person that you just want to please people. Like I'd be shy to post things that won't make them like look like, oh, this guy does not belong with us. You guys know what I mean? Like there are times I just really want to fit in. Right, and you just want to be part of that like group. You just want to be enjoying with them. But then one thing I've realized: this is where you, you, this is where you turn weakness to strength. The one thing I've realized is everything may be doable, but not everything is beneficial. That's very biblical. Um, that's that's where I learned it from. Everything is doable. You can do anything in life, like whatever people are doing. Um, Nobody is forcing you. Right, you can do anything in life, but not everything is beneficial. That's one thing I've learned in in my weakness. What about the other Kim? So it's one of your weaknesses. Um, well, because I am very much a planner and I like things planned out, especially ahead of time. One of my weaknesses is actually adjusting to sudden changes. So when something doesn't go um, my way or doesn't go as planned, I kind of panic a lot on the inside and maybe on the outside too sometimes. And that takes me a while to accept it and figure out something new to do. But yeah. Aww. Wow. Aww. For me, I actually have several weaknesses. Wow. Um, several, like I can think of 10,000 right now as we speak, <laughs> but, and I think that's what makes the love of God even more amazing. But um, one of my main weaknesses would have to be me overthinking everything. Um, I am a people pleaser. Like that's one thing that I'm not claiming that as my identity, but it's something that I have been struggling with for quite some time. And it's something that I have been, this is where God has been working in me um, with regards to my people pleasing habit. And because I like to um, even, not even intentionally all the time, I like to um, make people feel better or like to please or cater to people's wants sometimes even when I don't have to so um, I overthink everything especially with how people treat me or with how people um, talk to me like maybe it's not even a big deal for some people but for me I've already came up with like 10,000 things that why this person like has treated me this way and I think that's not a good thing I think that it definitely I definitely need some work on that and that's something I've been praying for yeah, but thank you, Lord, for your grace. That is sufficient for our weaknesses. Next question. What makes you cry? I guess one thing that recently made me cry was the COVID testing. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, this one is like, you can't hold back your tears. I, I pray and hope that you guys would never have to experience that. I, I think that's one thing that will always make me cry is family. Especially like the recent camp we just had for like CYNs, like, when the pastor was like, oh, go to your siblings or if you have family in, um, in, the, in, in this camp. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my first time um, being in camp with my, my siblings. And while well, well, the pastor said that, oh, go to your siblings, I'm, I was just walking, finding them, and I was already crying. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, praise the Lord. What about that, Um, One thing that make, what makes me cry... 
I think it's, well, I guess if I think about recently, it's probably when I start to overthink um, people's actions towards me. And then I feel like I'm less valued by those people than I hope for or that I expect. And then I cry even more when I remember that Jesus and his love is very much enough for me. And there's just going to be those kinds of people in your life. But Jesus is definitely more than enough. So how about you, Paula? Amen. Well, <laughs> this is so hard. But to be completely honest, what's one, the one thing that makes me cry the most is being misunderstood is whenever I'm misunderstood. Aww. I think that <laughs> I cry. Aww, sorry. I think that um, it's one thing to not have <laughs> it's one thing to not have the chance to speak out your truth, but it's another it's a whole new level of pain if you've already spoken out your truth and they just don't understand you or That's they just true. have this preconceived idea about you and it's already affecting the way they listen to you. <laughs> I might come there, I'm gonna cry. No, just kidding. But that's definitely one thing that makes me cry because the Lord knows this, most importantly. He knows this about me that it's one of the main things I surrender to Him all the time. It's Because that's when I most feel helpless, when I'm misunderstood. It's like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, I've already told you what I need to say. I don't, I've already, yeah. But then again, even with that being said, Every time I misunderstood, I have to give glory to God still because um, there's I I always feel a lot closer and a lot more intimate whenever I'm misunderstood here on earth because I have definitely put myself in situations where I've again I have fallen down I have been through the worst of the worst but in those times especially in those times that I can always feel the embrace of God because embrace because that's one of my main love languages I know it's not I don't know how you guys may perceive that but i definitely can feel his embrace every time i misunderstood and it's it makes me cry even more it's like oh yeah i i remember now that even when i misunderstood there's the lord who cares about me who knows me to my core and loves me and yeah i'm not gonna sugarcoat it it, it sucks it sucks but, right mm-hmm. but right. it's gonna be okay jesus is more than enough Amen. 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 Question number nine. What do you think your purpose is? I guess there's that main goal is to really spread the love of God through every corner in this world. That's like the main purpose. But I guess like the sideline purpose is like where you currently are right now for me. I guess to be able to relate and be relational to the younger generation based on how the Lord has revealed himself to me. By the grace of God and through God's love only. And not because I'm forced to do it, I mean. But because I want to do it for the Lord. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kuya Artem. I think we can all relate to that for sure here in this Zoom call. Thank you so much. What about you, Ate Kimi? Honestly, this is kind of a hard question. I was like thinking, how should I answer it? But... um, (laughs) Really, like just in general, I guess, I think my purpose is to allow God to use every single season, every single like part of my life to bring him glory that somehow, some way people will um, see his glory and his love through my life throughout everything I've gone through as in every single up and down. But um, I guess if I think of it career wise, I think my purpose is um, to make a difference in the lives of younger ones, of course. Um, wasn't expect like elementary age, middle school age, mm-hmm. hopefully high school age, but to really make a difference in their lives as a teacher, um, but letting them know that there's really an adult who loves them and actually cares for them, not just for their academics, but for who they really are as a person. Wow. Amen. 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 Before, before I took Jesus Christ seriously, I thought my purpose was, you know, it was based around worldly gains or worldly accomplishments. I thought that my purpose revolved around me studying and then graduating and then getting a job eventually, hopefully, by the grace of the Lord, um, getting married or if not, wherever, really like traveling and then retire. I thought that my purpose revolved around that. So having that purpose in mind before I took Jesus Christ seriously, it definitely filled me with so much worries and fears because I know my strengths and I know my limitations and I know that there are a lot of things that I cannot do as a person. So I was, I always felt like I wasn't good enough for the purpose that for that specific purpose, but 
<laughs> after Jesus Christ has encountered me to the core, to my very core, that's when he opened my eyes to my real purpose, which can really be summed up in two ways, which is something that you guys have already mm-hmm. mentioned. And it's receiving his love for me and sharing and reflecting that love to other people. I think receiving his love is one of the greatest gifts that, and to be loved by him is one of my greatest purpose in this world. And also not only keeping that love to myself, but really sharing it to other people, just like what we're doing yes. right now. And it's definitely only by His grace alone. So wherever He takes me right now, I'm currently studying political science. And sometimes I wonder why I'm there. <laughs> I still wonder why I'm there. I still wonder why the Lord has put me there when I had different plans. But I know that I'm there for a reason and that I carry that purpose in my mind that I'm there because He wants me to share that love. To, he wants me to share who He is. And everywhere I go, in my house and when I'm hanging out, I try and with the by His grace alone, I try and I strive to keep that purpose in mind that I'm here because I have received His love and I'm here to share it to others. It's all about the Lord. It's never about you anymore, right? I think that that's where it revolves. And 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 actually, like like what Paul, when Paul was just speaking, like I just remembered my Instagram like bio. It's I, I wrote there. I guess I could say that that's one of my purpose. Then it's um, to love God and love His people. Amen. Uh, uh, that's in my bio. So I think that's the really main goal then is love God and love people because that's like the first and second uh, commandment, right? It's basically you love God and love one another, right? So I guess that's for me, I guess just to add on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, amen. Uh, we definitely agree. I think it's important that we all know our purpose because if you don't know our purpose, just like what our Ate Jaja at church would always say, if you don't know your purpose, you would always misuse um, you know, who you are. Like, for example, if you don't know the purpose of a spoon, you'll use it as a hammer and you'll break it, right? Yeah. So I think it's very important that we all know our purpose. But <laughs> next question. <laughs> Ooh, last question, actually. Um, what do you guys hope to happen in this channel? Wow. There's a lot of things I want to happen in this channel, but just going to our main reason and goal is to really just share the love and (laughs) grace our Lord Jesus Christ to everywhere. That's what I'm really hoping for and praying for is that the videos we make, the contents we're going to be making, it will not only be like limited to our friends, but it will be everybody that needs to hear it for everybody to hear the name of Jesus. What about you, Ate Kim? Um, for me, what I hope to happen in this Grace Channel is not to make ourselves known, but to make our Jesus known for sure. And to be like a channel or a way where people will find hope yes. and just be reminded that they're never alone, that there's always at least one more person in this world who is going through what they may be going through. Um, well, for me... Just like what you guys have both mentioned, um, what I hope to happen in this channel is that this will be a medium where God himself can speak through our lives to this generation. I think that we're living in such a dark world um, Mm -hmm. with so many darkness and um, I only know one light that stays and that's the light of Jesus Christ. And I think, and this is my my only, my prayer and my hope is that just like what you, Kuya Artem and Atakimi has said, I pray that this will reach the brokenhearted, those who are, Mm -hmm. those who are sick, those who are poor in spirit, those who are lacking hope, those who are suffering mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and that um, to let you know that we're, we're, we're here in this channel, not because we're good, not because we're perfect, not because we have it all, because we really don't, but because we have a Jesus that has taken care of everything for us. So yeah, we want to share the love and the grace that we have received. That's like just like what Kuya Artem has said. But I actually have a bonus question for you guys. What? I promise bonus. you this is the last one. Bonus question. Uh. I promise you this is the last one. But... Uh. Um, when did you come to know the Lord? Um, it was in grade 7. So I guess I was 12 or 13 years old. I was invited by a friend. He invited me to a youth group. And I'm just like, what the heck is a youth group? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, because I, I just, I actually just, grade 7 year, that's my first year in Canada. I was never really much involved in, like, going to church or anything. But, yeah, I was invited to a youth group. I'm like, okay, might as well. Like, it's my first year in Canada. Make some friends and all that. Maybe it's fun or something. Maybe there's like prizes, like food or something. <laughs> but yeah, I went to a youth group. My first time, the pastor ta- uh, sat me down and he started talking to me, explaining everything, like what they do, who they believe in, uh, what the youth group is and all that. At the end, he asked me, can I pray for you? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, uh, that, that was the very first time actually someone prayed for me. 
So I was like, wow. It's the very first time someone prayed for me. So he started praying for me. And while he was praying, I started crying. And I'm like, this is out of the ordinary. Why would I be crying when someone's just praying for me? Right? And that's when I started to realize na, wow, it was only through God why I started crying, what I started start to feel. It was all because I started to experience the love of God, um, the grace of God, right? And I was just like, wow, why would I be crying right now? And there's, there's only one explanation and why, because um, through that prayer, God made me experience His love his grace, his forgiveness, right? So I praise God for that. Praise the Lord. And that's my little story and how I get to know God. So if you are invited by a friend to a powerhouse or to a youth group or something, message them right now. Message Go. them right now. Go. Thanks. Or like, don't say no. Give it a try. It, it'll probably like the best day of your life. What about you, Ate Kimi? Well, my mom is a Christian in our family, so I grew up going to church and learning about Jesus along the way, especially because I would attend Sunday school every Sunday, right? But um, I think it was in grades, when I was in grade six, when I really accepted Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior, which happened at like a Sunday service. And I was just sitting at the front and the pastor was like, if you would like to accept Jesus, uh, pray this prayer with us. So I did it. But of course, along the way, you know, being in grade six, there's so many things we go through as we grow up, as we grow up. Mm -hmm. um, but really getting to know the Lord in a deeper, deeper sense was more like 2016 for me. So, yeah. Wow. How about you, Phil? Actually, at the Kimmy, we're kind of like our story is kind of similar. I, it's my mom as well that is the Christian in the family. And I grew up. Um, hearing about Jesus Christ from my mom, she brought us to church and she put us in Sunday schools. But I obviously had to discover who Jesus was for myself because I'm just that kind of person. <laughs> but yeah, um, I had I went to a youth camp in 2009. Um, it was far away from home where I lived back in the Philippines. But in that youth camp, that's when I personally accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. But little did I know that that was only the beginning of the long journey that I was about to go through. Fast forward to 2014 here in Winnipeg, I went to Encounter God Retreat here in Jael. And that's when I rededicated my life to the Lord. But even then, even after then, I stumbled and fell so many times. I've experienced so many things that I shouldn't have, that I disobeyed, or there are times that the Lord has allowed it Himself. And then fast forward to, wait, hold on yeah 2014 2014 ever since then that's when i've experienced the lowest of the lows and some mountaintops as well but not a lot of people know this but only back in two years ago 2018 when i had a major shift in my life and that's when obviously i was already a christian before then but there was definitely a major shift in that happened in october 2018 that made me just you know genuinely 110 percent give my whole being to the lord it took a while it's not the most ideal testimony for sure but it's the testimony that God has blessed me with and mm -hmm. I will proudly say it because I know that God is working in me still and with all of us as well and I just want to praise God for the testimonies that you guys have shared for the stories that you guys have shared I know and I believe that the Lord um, will use those stories to reach people people that we don't even know um but right now, I know in my heart that you are not watching this because of an accident. I, I don't know what time you're watching this. I don't know where. But one thing I want to assure you is that you're not watching this because of an accident. You're watching this because of a beautiful reason. And that reason is because God loves you very much. If there's anyone who knows you deep down to your very core, it is God and God alone. He knows your needs. He knows your wants. He knows the desires of your hearts. He knows your dreams. But you know what else he knows? He knows your mistakes. He knows your shortcomings. He knows your failures. He knows it all. He knows you the best, but he loves you the most still. He's still the only one that loves you the most. It says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, if you have a Bible, you can open it. If you don't, you can, um, you can search it up um, on Google. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says there um, that we, all of us, you and I, we have all fallen short. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because we have fallen short of his standard because of our sinful nature, it says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, 
it should be right over here, the verses um, <laughs> right over here. Um, it mentioned that we were only supposed to have one destination and that is death. Not only physical death, but spiritual death. Death where there is eternal pain and there's no chance of getting back up. I know that this all sounds crazy, but I'm telling you and I'm assuring you that this this is the truth and this is all real. And But if you keep reading that verse, if you keep reading um, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says there, For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But, there's a but. There's a but. And that word, the word but there signifies hope. The word but there signifies that, um, yes, we have sinned. Yes, we have made mistakes. Yes, we have fallen short of the glory of God. But that is not the end. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. Through Jesus Christ. You and I, if all just going to be real and honest, we deserve death. We deserve death. We deserve. We didn't deserve any love. We des- We didn't deserve any grace or mercy. The only thing that we deserved is death. But in John chapter three verse sixteen, it's our God the Father proved just how powerful His love is for us. It says there again. If you don't have your Bibles, it should be over here or over here. <laughs> it's in. The, it's in the screen. In John chapter three verse sixteen, it says there. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus Christ has paid the price that we were all supposed to pay. So that, And all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe and receive. With the pandemic, with the wars, and with the famine, and every single unfortunate thing that happened la- the last year and all over the world, I think we should start asking if heaven is real. I think we should start asking, is heaven real? And if it is, how do I get there? How do I get to heaven? Um, and there's only one way to get to heaven where your father is, where the father is. It is not through your good deeds. It is not through religion. It is not having a lot of accomplishment in this life. No, the only way to get to heaven, the only way to be with the Father in heaven is through Jesus Christ alone. You don't have to be perfect to come to Him. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be to have it all together before you come to Him. You, just, you can just come as you are, regardless of how messy, regardless of how hurt, regardless of how tired, of how dirty you may think you are. You can come to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. You can stop fighting your battles on your own with your limited strength. You can stop living this life on your own. Uh, on your own. You can stop just carrying every burden that you may have. You can start giving your life to the God who has already won every battle for you, who has already given you all the love that you can possibly receive, who has already given you endless chances to make your life better. And if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can repeat after me. Um, You can bow your head and close your eyes wherever you may be, and you can repeat after me as I pray this simple prayer. Our Father in heaven, I admit that I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. And Lord, I need your help. I need a savior. I believe that you have died on the cross to save me from my sins. I receive you, Lord, as my personal Lord and savior. Please take over my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Wow. So if you guys have any prayer requests or, or questions, make sure to uh, follow us and shoot us a message on our Instagram page. We have an Instagram page. It's called um, the Grace Channel app. Grace Channel. It will be somewhere. Like There will be a link. It will be somewhere around here. App Grace Channel. So make sure to follow us so you can shoot us a message or if you just want to talk to us or if you have any question, um, feel free to just message us. We'll be waiting. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and of course, before we go, we just want to say thank you to everyone who has watched this video. Also, wishing you all a happy new year. It has definitely been very different for all of us. 
but praying for an overflow of God's love and blessings and for new and greater things to be in store for all of our 2021. So God bless you all and stay tuned for our next video. Bye! Bye.